Hi everybody, this is Josh with a, another video tutorial. This time we're in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to get a very precise, clean cutout of your images using the pen tool. So before I get to cutting out images, I just want to show you the pen tool because there's a lot of people I think that don't really either know about the pen tool or how to use it. You can go to Photoshop help. It's at helpx.adobe.com. I'll have a link in the description. There's a good help page for that. But I just want to show you sort of my cliff notes on using the pen tool. The pen tool has two basic uses, drawing shapes and drawing paths. Now you can get into the work paths and all that kind of stuff, but I tend to stay away from that just for my, my uses and my techniques. I work in the layers panel and I can just switch between shape and path. To create a shape, I'm going to switch it to shape right now. Right now we're going to be creating, uh, and this is CS6 by the way, you can have control over the fill and the stroke. So let's just create a black shape with no outline. And we'll go here, and we're going to be creating a new layer, a new shape layer. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'll just show you um, basically how the pen tool works. The pen tool creates little nodes. As soon as you click, it creates a node. If you just simply click, it creates a straight node. And what that means is your next line is going to be straight out from that point. Now if I click and hold down and start pulling, it's going to create a curve. See that? So I can hold down and decide how much curve do I want this to have, this next line. As soon as I let go, it's going to start creating a shape. My next click will be based on the amount of curve that I just gave this last point. And if I click, you'll see I've got another curve already. Now even if I would have just clicked, because this has a curve at the beginning and the curve at the end, it's going to be a curved line. I can change that by holding down the command key or control on PC and moving in one of these points. Now if I hold down Alt as well, I can control just one point. So I can control the direction of the next line. And if I hold Shift, it will snap to 45 degree angles. So if I want a straight line coming right off of that, just click and there we go. And then to connect these, I can simply hover over the first node that I created or first point until I get a little closed circle that's going to be closing the path and I can click or click and drag to finish off my shape. So this is how you can create more complex shapes and I think once you learn the pen tool you can do this very quickly and create things that are not just your basic you know ellipse and rectangle or rounded rectangle. This also allows you to get in very detailed for making selections. And we'll do that next. I'm going to move over here to this photo I have. I'm going to change this from shape mode to path mode. And instead of filling in the, the shape as you saw over here, it's just going to create a path that I can use to make a selection. So I'm just going to quickly cut out this working man here. This is a sample from Deposit Photos. Make sure you buy your stock photos if you're going to use them in commercial work. This is just a free lesson, so we'll use this as a good uh, example. So what I'm going to do, now why, why would you use the pen tool as opposed to like the magic wand tool or the uh, quick selection tool? Well, let me show you. If I start using the quick selection tool, especially in a photo like this, it doesn't have a solid background. And especially with detailed lines like this, with lots of divisions, he's got a plaid checkered shirt here with bricks in the background. So this is going to be quite difficult to get a really clean cutout. So you know, it's selecting some of his checkers, it's selecting some of his hair. And I can go in and manually clean up this with the selection tools, or I can go straight to the pen tool to get a really precise cutout. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go all the way around this guy. As you see here between his arms, we've got some areas that we're going to have to deal with. And I'll show you how to do that 
after we get a good outline around him. So I'm just going to start by choosing a point that I want to create this path. I'm going to make sure that this is on just uh, combined shape layers and just going to start up here by the helmet. Now, like I said, if you just drop a point or a node down, it's going to be a straight point or node. So from here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to start dropping down some points. This takes some practice, but you can always hit the undo if it's not quite right. For example, if I would want to create a, a path with this curved uh, contour of the helmet, I might want to put one maybe here in, in the middle rather than down here by his finger. We can try it and see how it works. I'd have to pull quite a bit, and I can do it. And then make sure now, if I let go of this and try to create a a point over here and get this little uh, hump of his finger here, it's not going to work. See that? Because the next line is um, is being created using the the curve that I created as its reference point for where the next line is going to go. So let's just back up a bit. So I'm going to click and hold down and drag until I get a nice curve. And I just follow the line of pixels there as my guide. Now I'm going to hold down Alt. Remember that? If we hold down Alt, we can control one side of this curve. So now we can make a straight curve. I'm just going to start it right here, right next to his finger there. It has a little hill. And some of this is going to be up to your interpretation, depending on how um, how much information is in the actual pixels of the photo. So I'm just going to guess this is just a little bit of a, a hill right here. So I'm going to click and pull, hold Alt for my next line. And see, I can direct the direction of the next line. And this is next hill, his knuckles over here. Just clicking and dragging to create curved lines. Organic shapes have lots of, of curved lines. There's not very many straight lines. Unless you're going to be cutting out like a, a machine or a sign or something that's very geometric. I'm going to go around his shirt here. Just following the folds. Some points I'm leaving as straight and some points I'm curving and holding Alt, directing the direction of my next line. A nice straight line here. And then it starts to curve. I mean, a, a little bit general here just to uh, speed up this process. But the nice thing about using the pen tool is you can change this and really refine it and go back in and change it again. You're not locked down to pixels that you've used for a uh, layer mask or using the eraser. I would never suggest using the eraser uh, to cut out something, especially if you're not sure what all needs to go and what needs to stay. So I've just followed down his jeans there. Just for time's sake, I'm going to
leave out most of this and just go back to the helmet up here. Now, we have our path. We can just right click on the path and say, create vector mask. And it will create a vector mask on whatever layer I have selected. Right now I have the photo selected, so I'll say create vector mask. Now look at this. It's created a mask. And it's very precise. This is great for these nice curving, flowing lines of the outline of this guy here. So it's very precise. And guess what? I can go back in here and change it anytime. If I hit A, it's going to uh, switch to the, let's see what this is, the uh, path selection tool. So I can select the path. And if I hold command, it's going to be the direct selection tool. Okay. Just like an illustrator. And this will allow me to come in and adjust these little nodes or points. And I have pixel snapping on right now. So it's going to snap to pixels. So maybe they want this hill to include a little bit more of that finger. And you can see it updates in, in real time. So that I can make those small minor adjustments. Look how clean that line is. Very nice. And it's adjustable. So I keep that layer mask on there. Now what about these areas here? Let's go back to our pen tool. And we'll switch the mode to subtract from shape. Now, if you have that path selected and you change it to subtract, uh, it would subtract the path that you have selected. So I deselected it, changed the pen tool to subtract, and then went back to the layer, uh, the vector mask. So now I'm on subtracting the shape. I'm going to go in here and start selecting again, but this is going to subtract from the mask that I've already created. So you can see, you can start seeing here the, the white canvas behind here should start showing up. Now this is going to be a problem in just a minute. See now it's cutting off part of his face. And it's not really, it's just trying to connect my two points. So, um, so that I can see the photo underneath this, I'm just going to hold down shift and click on the vector mask. And that's just going to temporarily disable it. You'll see just a red line through it. It's still there. And I can continue going on and be able to see the path that I'm creating and the photo. I'm going to ignore that D there, the watermark. Go for a shirt here. Get as many folds and wrinkles as I want. I usually keep my thumb on the Alt key when I'm doing this so that I can direct those curves, the direction of the next curve. All right, now look at this. I missed my mark a little bit. If I hold down Command while I have the, the pen tool still, I can select this little point and move it. So I'm going to move it just up like that. You can also use the arrow keys once you have that selected and move it. And again, it's on pixel snapping. You can also adjust the curve here. So I'm still in the pen tool, but just holding down Alt and Command gives me some more um, functions and options while I'm still drawing the shape. So I'll we'll go around his thumb here, and there we go. Now when I engage by holding down Shift again and click on the vector mask, you'll see my nice cutout. So that's how you do it. I've gone ahead and done this with a uh, an airplane. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing, but I want to show you what you can achieve um, in an actual project that, uh, that I, uh, I'm still working on. We're just about finished up with it. This is a very giant billboard. A very giant, yes, very giant billboard. And um, 
we created it in Photoshop. And I cut out the airplane to use a different background. And I used this, this method. I used the pen tool using the vector mask so that uh, these, these edges would stay very clean and very crisp. And the reason I call this the perfect cutout is because you can always go back in here. I can just grab A, the A key, and go back in here and adjust this just ever so slightly, making sure that I include everything that I want to include and cut out everything that I don't want. If I go to 100%, look at how nice that cutout is. Very crisp, very clean. I love the way that the, the, the anti-aliasing works when you're using the vector mask on a, on a photo. Uh, sometimes this is not what you want. For example, um, these hairs wouldn't be too bad, but if they were long, wispy hairs, or if there's depth of field, you want to have some blur in your cutout. Um, you can always right-click this and rasterize the vest vector mask. I'll do that now. And now you're able to paint just like a regular layer mask. So if I hit my brush and now I'm on black, take down my brush size, I can just paint in with pixels a mask. So say this shoulder was out of focus, I could soften that right up to blend it in with the background behind it. But now my vector information is gone. So I would do as much with the vector mask as possible and then possibly create a duplicate, which is just Command J, and rasterize that. That way you can always go back to your vector information if you want to refine your cutout very precisely. Again, sometimes you're going to want to blur things for depth of field, blur the edges, if you don't want this crisp of a cutout. But the vector mask gives you the most control and the most editability for your cutouts. And I think if you learn the pen tool, you'll also find that it's extremely fast. You don't have to worry about stray pixels getting selected or parts of the photo. I see this constantly, even in professional work, even in commercial work where there's jagged edges or there's little uh, pieces looks like they've been nibbled on by mice. You've probably seen it too in cutouts. With a pen tool, you're just not going to get that because you're determining what's selected and what's included and what's not included in the cutout. I hope that you learned both how to create shapes using the pen tool in Photoshop as well as creating really clean cutouts with the pen tool. For more tutorials, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.